Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobbler's Plus in Denver. Uh, today I was going to be showing you guys real quick some elephant skin boots. How to treat them, clean them up and everything. Um, as you can tell right there, I've got the other boot. We've already done a little bit of work on them, resoling them. But it's now time to treat the uppers. Now, it's definitely one of those very rare and exotic uh, leathers. Elephant skin, very, very hard to find nowadays. Um, of course, you, you guys all know the reasons because elephants are becoming more and more endangered. But um, you can still find boots like this. They may be old ones. From what I understand, most elephant boots actually come from an elephant that has died of natural causes. There's a fair amount of these boots still around also and still being made but it's kind of a, a rare luxury now, in other words, at, at a fairly high cost nowadays. Uh, now this pair is fairly old as well. Um, you know, with elephant skin, you don't really have any kind of issues as far as a cracking because of how tough and durable it is. But, you know, every now and then, it's a good idea to give them at least a little bit of a conditioner. Now because this is such a nice exotic leather, um, I'm going to only be using Saphir Medal Dior. I am not going to be using Beauty De Cure, except for, um, actually, no, I'm not going to be using any Beauty De Cure today. I don't know why I even have these over here, but Medal Dior, let's stick to all that today, especially on something this nice. Now, this is the Renovator Cream. I've got my little dauber brush here. I usually like to write on them. I don't know if it shows Renovator just write it by hand. I don't put fancy nice stickers on there because I go through these brushes often and some of the colors clean off any any residue that may be on there. Alright, now you don't really have to go through with any kind of harder cleaners or anything with um, solvents in it like uh, Reno Mat, uh, acetone or anything like that. The only time you do that is actually when you're going to be trying to um, change the color on it, which is very, very difficult to do on elephant skin. The Medal Dior cream, now this, it's mainly water-based, uses mink oil and uh, lanolin as well in it, and the water is what's basically going to help clean all this up. You can see some of that coming off, just a little bit of the reddish tint on them. They are kind of a wine color. Could be also some of the dye coming off a little bit on the sole too because the brush is touching it just a little bit. These soles haven't had a chance to quite cure completely overnight yet, but they'll be all, all set here by tomorrow morning. And unfortunately we're closed tomorrow, so by Monday morning. No, it's, but anyways, we're just going to go through with our nylon brush. We're going to, or not nylon, I'm sorry, horsehair dauber brush. And just clean everything, get into the nooks and crannies here on the inside. Don't forget around the welted areas too, to get in there. It's good to get in and clean out some of the dust. And you could use a, you know, a, a chamois or a rag as well, kind of like that. Some blue on that one. But you can use that as well. But I definitely like the dauber brushes a bit more, especially with the renovator. Because you can really get into those nooks and crannies nicely. And because it has no pigment to it, it really um, it really definitely helps out significantly to be able to do a two-tone colored shoe or anything like that. Now on a more delicate leather, um, ostrich for example, the mink oil in this will actually discolor your... Um, sorry, I'm trying to grab a brush here. Trying to dis it will discolor your ostrich quite a bit. So make sure you be a little more careful with that. In that case, you'd actually want to use the Saphir Delicate Cream. Uh, Big Four actually is a good one too. Unfortunately, I don't stand behind Big Four all that much just because they don't uh, disclose what key ingredients they tend to use in it. And I'm a little iffy about that. Uh, so, and I really, really would much rather know what's in my products that I'm using and of course no company is going to disclose every ingredient but Safira at least mentions all the key ingredients and that's what we're after knowing what the key ingredients are all right now we're going to take care of the tops here now this leather the um the elephant skin it doesn't really dry out I mean it has a dry feel to it so 
you shouldn't have any kind of issues with it dry rotting or anything as well but again like i said at least once a year it's be a good idea just to go through it add a little bit of conditioner to it again Saphir renovator cream renovator or renovatoire some people call it will be an amazing product to use if you only used one product and that's what what i would highly recommend for any of your shoes it also has a little bit of beeswax in it and the beeswax definitely helps out significantly with giving you a little bit of a shine or shimmer on your boots or shoes and it also helps protect it from water because it is a wax once it dries and hardens which it does fairly quick it gives you a nice little layer of protection now I guess I'll go ahead and just leave this one alone just so we have a side-by-side -side comparison for you but I'll go ahead and close this off one thing I also want to mention any of these Saphir Medal Dior jars, if you're somebody who owns some or you plan to purchase some, be very careful with these lids. Uh, don't over tighten them. I have a horrible tendency of over tightening just about everything all the time. You know, if it's delicate like that, because this is a glass jar and an aluminum lid, um, and I ended up stripping it actually. So you can see I could just keep twisting and twisting this one. Um, it's. It's nothing with the company it's actually my fault you know i i just have a bad habit of doing that don't know why always ever since i was a kid i was just like that but um hang on where did i put my brush a little bit of dust on there i really don't want to put it facing down i don't know why i'm just so paranoid because it's so shiny on that sole but uh anyways as you can tell we already did the edging on this so we're not going to be doing any edging today um, for that you can probably see one of my other videos of me doing edging and stuff and I'll probably be making a lot more in-depth ones too. Oh, sorry, I'll be right back. Perfect time. I'll let this dry. Yeah, with the um, elephant skin, you're not going to be able to shine these up all too, too much necessarily. You can see right there, this one, I haven't done anything on it yet. It's a little dirtier looking, I guess you could say, from the pebbled grain. There's dust inside of it. But... Um, if you want you can stop there you know to give it that condition with the renovator cream and uh, just move on to whatever you're doing basically but we're gonna go on next step we're gonna use some uh, some of the pomadier cream from Saphir Medal Dior uh, definitely great stuff uh, this does have a bit more turpentine in it you definitely don't want to use it on very delicate leathers um, ostrich definitely is one of those you don't want to uh, certain other types of light colors too that are very soft pig skin goat skin I've definitely come across that you don't want to use anything with a solvent in it so the pomadier cream definitely will be a nicer polish there's also the seraphim cream you can go with if you'd like to from Saphir but the pomadier cream has a little more waxes in it it's got the beeswax some carnauba wax I bet you anything in there and a few other things um, to definitely help help nourish that leather and give it more of a shimmer as well uh, so this will be kind of a step up from just using the renovator cream as well and not only that it's going to give you that base that if you decide to use a wax on it of any kind this has a little more wax content concentration in it and it'll be a nice base to build off of if you're trying to shine now on shoes you're most likely going to do the whole thing anyways on a pair of boots i usually don't uh don't recommend doing the shaft right here because it'll come off onto your pants most gentlemen especially tend to wear their boots with the pants going over top of the shaft area and tends to rub off just a little a little more that way and so i don't recommend doing it too much on western boots you know the renovator will be plenty good that's all i would recommend doing but there we go got that on there and we're just going to give it a quick brush over just to make sure we remove any access we're not actually trying to buff it at this point just removing a little bit of access because again there's turpentine in this it is a natural pine based turpentine so it's not a chemical of any kind that's very strong 
and uh, we're gonna go ahead and allow this now to dry for just a second and uh, we'll be back in a few so I'll let these guys sit for a little while allow that turpentine to kind of evaporate a little bit I should probably tables a little dirty here I should probably do that protect that sole so iffy about wanting to protect that sole it's gonna be worn just a few times and it's gonna start to wear out but I still want that presentation I still haven't taken after pictures quite yet but anyways um, we've allowed that uh, pomadier cream to dry a little bit allowed that turpentine to evaporate and I'm gonna move on let's see find the right cream here I'm gonna use some Dal Dior neutral cream or sorry wax paste cream and we're just gonna move on to that actually yeah that's what I was gonna do now we're gonna take our little toothbrush looking horsehair brush uh, it's got nice little long flexible bristles you don't want to use a regular toothbrush just because it's going to um, it, it's going to scratch it up a little bit a toothbrush tends to have nylon bristles they're a little bit harder than the horsehair brush so that's what you want to use but we're gonna just dab a little bit of it here but we're just gonna go through and just go around the welt area here and just apply some onto the welt like inside where the stitches are right right in there where that welt stitch is we'll get some wax in there it'll kind of help seal up the stitch holes just a little bit and also we're getting it right on the edge here too again like I said I already barnished it but we could give it a little bit of an extra glaze too now at this stage now we're gonna be treating the uh, elephant skin itself with a little bit of wax to give it give it a bit more of a shimmer. I prefer to use my fingers directly, get some uh, get some wax on there and just rub it in. With your fingers, you have a little more control. Also the fingerprints that you have on your fingers it allows to pick up just the right amount of wax so that you're not getting huge globs of any kind. And you could use a chamois again like this guy here that i had with the blue i've used it a few times already and just use it as, still have a little more to use it anyways but you know i'd i'd much rather use my fingers just because you have better control of how much wax you're picking up because this saphir pate deluxe wax i forgot to mention what it was called it's very soft and so i mean if you press down in it your finger is going to go straight to the bottom So I'm going to allow this uh, about 5 to 10 minutes to really dry, probably closer to about 10 minutes, uh, so that the turpentine really evaporates, and I'll kind of clean up this area in the meantime, plus I've got a few other things i got to do real quick. So it's perfect timing, give it 10 minutes, uh, allow it to dry, and I'll meet you guys back here in just a second. Now, sorry about that, but I did forget to also mention something. I've got the boot hanging up over here and drying on a hook, so nothing's being touched on it since I'm being so iffy but cleaning your brushes up make sure you do that as well take a rag you know regular towel don't use a chamois don't waste your chamois on it but literally just take your brush and just go like this just circular motion just kind of up and down left and right you know wipe off some of that axis in case you have any you know you're gonna have some embedded in your horsehair brush but once it's all dry you literally just take your hand and move it around like that right there and you'll break off little crumbs off of it basically um, over time eventually it will still just cake up and everything you have two options one you can either um, let me grab it here real quick 
you can either of course replace your brush that's your option and then option two is taking some reno map because it's formulated to remove waxes and polishes it's not formulated uh, to be strong enough to remove original dyes from uh, from your shoes but it's a great neat little trick to actually cleaning and you know cleaning off your brushes so I'm gonna clean this one off I'll be right back I'm gonna grab another brush that's a little bit uh, a little bit dirtier I guess you could say and I'll show you real quick what we're gonna do with it all right, told you I'd be back all right but uh, this is a brush we've been using for the black cream polishes and I let my son Sebastian use it. He's learning to shine shoes and everything and doesn't exactly do too well to clean it off. And I mean, this, these bristles are like stiff, but this will give you an idea. This is what you're going to do with your brush. Just kind of move it around like this and you can see all that little chunks that fell off, you know. Now this brush has a lot more embedded in it, unfortunately, and it's already dried and crispy. So I'm just gonna try to get as much as I can off just as is. I'm gonna use my towel here just a little bit. No, nope, looks like it doesn't wanna come off all that much. But I guess uh, we'll just take it up a notch then in other words. Now I have a smaller amount here in this bottle I'm gonna finish up first. And all I'm gonna do is just take a container, pour it in just like that looks a little white and everything I'm just gonna literally put the brush in like that there try to soak up some of that reno mat you can see it already cleaning it off it was white before but just kind of work it in there you only need a little bit voila look at that all right but anyways once it's on there you want to try to start wiping it off of me whoa look at all that that just came off holy cow man but, wow, he really left a lot on there. But this will definitely help remove a lot of what you might have there. And I'm going to get in here and clean this out because there's a lot of residue still left in, left in there. And because he left so much on there, my son is 8 years old. So, kind of give you guys an idea of an 8 year old kid, you know. He's gonna leave things like this behind for dad to deal with. But, no harm, I guess. I mean, I, I'm at a cobbler shop. Worst case, you know, I could just replace it. But that's how I learned as well from my father. Did a lot of damage to small things like this. Luckily, we've got Reno Mat now. Before, we didn't have that. Maybe it was around, but not with my dad's shop. But I put a little bit more on there. Oh man, look at that. Look at all that coming off. Jeez. And you just kind of move it, you know, side to side, just trying to pull off some of that. Put a little bit more on there. Now, of course, you're not going to get out all 100% of it, you know. You're going to get out majority of whatever may have been caked on or you may have forgotten to remove. All right, now you don't want to clean your brushes using acetone, alcohol, or thinner, unfortunately, just because that is a little bit stronger, you know, a little bit of a stronger agent, I guess you could say. And it does have a tendency to do a little more damage to the horsehair bristles. I think this is our last go at this now. Yeah, there we go. Now it's just starting to turn gray. Now this brush, this is an applicator brush, of course, too, so we tend to use it just to dip it in the uh, black pomadier or seraphim cream. Uh, this one's for the seraphim cream in particular, actually. And um, so we're going to have a good amount of residue a lot of times left over. I tend to try to make sure to clean it off right after, but, you know, got to teach my son to shine some shoes, and uh, I'll be willing to give up a few dozen of these if I really have to. I'd rather have him know how to shine shoes even if he doesn't become a cobbler or shoe shine guy down the road but he needs to know how to take care of his own shoes at the very least all right i'm a bit of a strict dad unfortunately yeah. so tough love that's that's the type of person i am but give you guys an idea you probably seen i was a lot whiter before but 
it's not so white anymore and I think I only have maybe just one or two more uses left for this rag maybe wiping up some glue or something and then it goes in the trash mm -hmm. but uh, yeah that gives you an idea actually I'll wipe this up probably reuse it for another time again good old dollar store cups I can buy more of them if I really want to but why waste it why trash it it's still alright to be used but anyways I've been babbling on and now the boots have dried it's been a little while on there but yeah you can see right there it still isn't all that shiny yet so we're gonna take our horsehair brush again and just buff it over and the friction at this point was what's gonna remelt the wax the turpentine did its job to kind of melt that wax make it soft and usable but at this point we're just going to go through and use friction to heat it back up and try to give it a little bit of a shimmer now again it's not all that shiny pebble grain does not shine up way too much you know you can use something like the uh, mirror gloss if you really really wanted to which is this stuff here Saphir Medal Dior's mirror gloss. It's reflecting a little too much. It's got a harder wax, isn't it? And a little less turpentine in there. So you really have to work it into the leather more. Again, I don't want to use it on this because it's going to crack. And I don't want this gentleman's boots, you know, after one or two wears looking shabby. So, but that gives you an idea there. Here's this other boot that uh, we haven't quite done yet. In other words, you can see inside there where the welt is, the difference. This one's got a bit more dirt in there. That one's a little more cleaned up. And you can't really tell too, too much as far as the shine, I guess, on camera. But it definitely has a little bit more of a glaze in person. All right, if you want to skip over this, this is kind of just a little bonus extra. This is my uh, shoe shine kit here. Uh, I've got some little brushes. I'm hoping to experiment with some patina work and everything. My horsehair brushes, I already have one out of the box right now. Well, out of the toolbox. But it's just a nice little handy toolbox, kind of like that. This front end closes up like that there. And it locks up with some keys. And then slides in under there. Got a bunch of dauber brushes that got a little moved around when I was searching for things. And then we'll start up here. Got my renovating creams. They're highly pigmented, great for your edge dressing if you're trying to match a better color. And then also to repair any deep scuffs as well. And then we'll go here, we've got some of our Phoebing's edge dressing, some barge rubber cement just in case up top, nylon brushes. I had one more here that I ended up taking out and not putting back in, a suede eraser some assorted laces there and then i'm supposed to have more juva cure which i took a couple out because i ran out here at the shop and I had to steal it from my case here and i've got my waxes in that one and this one again i took a couple out again i keep stealing my own stuff i'm a thief I should go to, go to jail and press charges against myself I keep stealing <laughs> But uh, anyways, I've got uh, some cleaner solution. I got my Reno mat, the smaller jar, some uh, greasy oiled leather from Saphir, Angelus Easy Cleaner, Big Four. I still have yet to kind of mess around with. Again, I said I'm not a big fan of Big Four only because I don't know what key ingredients they have in there. It's still great stuff though. It does not darken leather or anything. So very, very good stuff. I've got some Angelus spot remover for a little more difficult spots, some desalter acrylic paints for touch-up this back here I was experimenting with this is actually Angelus's walk-on red put it on the bottom of red soles some of you may have seen this uh, case before I've gone through it but uh, anyways this is some of the cream pomadier creams I've got some cordovan creams in here um, some other uh, seraphim creams that are in odd colors as well. I had a blue one in here too, but I took that out. My uh, Delicate Cream, Reptin Cream. I am also missing a few other ones from here that I also took out. Uh, it'd be my oiled leathers and everything, but 
gives you an idea of my little toolbox that I was stealing from for this video as well. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, gives you an idea of how we treat uh, elephant skin. Uh, again, it's a very rare leather. It's kind of like a exotic, one of those that's hard to come by. But those few that have it or come across a pair, this is how we end up treating it. Again, you can't shine them too much. You can't make them extremely shiny, but this gives you an idea of what you should be doing, even though it's one of the most durable leathers you can possibly find out there. Um, again, before I keep rambling on, thanks for watching. I uh, hope uh, you guys learned a few things here and there, and uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Give us a call, send us a message. Uh, we'll be glad to help you walk through whatever we can, give you advice on any of the products as well. Um, if, uh, if you're wondering why this video kind of sucks, I'm a cobbler. I'm not that good at recording. I'm not a videographer. I'm not a good video editor as well. But I still appreciate anybody that watches and subscribes as well. I'll be making more videos. I've been enjoying this, kind of making some of these videos to help some of you out and see how things are usually done here at our shop. Um, again, subscribe and follow. Uh, find us on Facebook. Go to cobblersplus.com if you have any questions or if you want to ship out anything for us to work on fill out our form on there under mail-in repairs and we'll be happy to help you all right we'll see you next time